Hi, my name is Leila Felder. I'm 17 years old and I'm an avid art lover. Come join me as I talk with artists and curators about their art, their processes, and what makes them tick. Because we are in conversation. There we go. So what I like about this one is that I wanted to make it high. I mean, it could be one low, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, I can, you know, accentuate. Oh, yeah, because it sits so on the shoulders. It sit on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Next to me here is a queen. Her name is Grace Kessa, um, and she is uh, words. She's uh, so fan. I can't even explain. Like, yeah. How she, did you meet Grace Kessa? I. Do you remember? Fahamu, right? Yes. We were at yes. Fahamu's. Yeah. You remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. I had, like it took me a second to go mm -hmm. all the way back. But I was, we were at um, one who's opening at the High Museum, and I was looking at, I think it was like the, oh, it's called like 95 cents or something like that. It was one of the pieces that was like an imitation of a magazine cover, and I was looking at the um, peacock feathers mm -hmm. on the sneaker. Mm -hmm. Remember, you and yes, Bahama yes, yes. walked over, yes. um, and we... He introduced me to you, actually. There we go. Yes. Yeah. I had actually forgotten that because I thought it was later than that. And mm -hmm. I once was Googling something, so, just Googling myself, uh -huh. and a picture of you and I, you were about this high, yeah. and Fahamu in the middle of us looking like he's introducing us. And it was, yeah. like, it was there. And I was like, what? Of course, I took a screenshot of it. <laughs> kept it for myself. Because I was like, that's history. Like, yeah. who would have known that, I think you were like eight or nine. I, that's probably, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? I did. I have a recording of myself at four years old. Um, uh, my dad used to interview us as babies mm -hmm. and, you know, record us, uh, ask us, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I had just started nursery school, so he was, mm -hmm. and I just started learning English. So, um, I was trying to use my new English to describe, oh. you know what it was, but most of it was my mother tongue, so mm -hmm. um, from the Luya tribe, we were mm -hmm. speaking um, Kimaragodi, which mm -hmm. is my dad's um, dialect. Mm -hmm. Makuba makuba da gundi nanga gashem tube na boranga amadiku gano eh madiku ba ribe then de nanga eh abandu basanza eh take it so good to de nanga no kiri koreta umgogo no adu kamihege jo koreta umgogo and so he asked me what well, what do you do yeah, what do you do at school and I was like you know I eat such and such and what do you want to do what do you want to be when you grow up mm -hmm. and I said I wanted to write pictures I didn't know what it was called oh. but I want to write pictures that's so, so cute right <laughs> right so when I, it has always been in my life it has always mm -hmm. been part of what I do mm -hmm. um, it's been my meditation it's been a way I can process the world around me mm -hmm. uh, we moved uh, a lot growing when I was growing up my dad was an economist and so we traveled um, you know three different African countries mm -hmm. and then the US and so moving from place to place mm -hmm. I always it was my 
therapy is how I processed the new schools and the people that I met. Mm -hmm. Lucky enough, because I was painfully shy, I had two sisters that mm -hmm. were also going through it, the, the same thing that, that I was going through. Mm -hmm. So it made it manageable. Nice. Did you like to, like, did you use crayon or pencil, or what did you like to use when you were little? We Just used everything. everything. I remember my mother got us all little watercolor sets. I was probably around five or six. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that. And she used to work at an office, and she would take the these uh, typing paper. It wasn't mm -hmm. typing paper, but it would come out of, you know, where the it's serrated in between, so you can tear yeah. off. Yeah. So we would use the back side of it, which is white, to mm -hmm. do watercolor. She used to bring us reams of that, huh. and we'd paint on that. But then our uh, play uh -huh. was, we didn't just make art with painting. Mm -hmm. So when we played, we played outside. Mm -hmm. We always had a beautiful garden, and we would use some of the different foliage mm -hmm. to make, to craft things. Um, so we used palm fronds. My mom sh showed us how to weave mm -hmm. uh, using those palm fronds, and that wow. became part of our play. Um, sometimes we'd make our own dolls. Uh -huh. uh, we read voraciously, so we always read. Uh, we played vigorously. We had a big imagination, and we were always outside. Mm -hmm. and so we just created worlds um, in our play. So it, today they would call it, it was performance, it was installation, uh, mixed media, you know, so all of that was, was part of our play. We did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so did you go to art school here or did you go in a different state? or country? Here, here in, in, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came from, at the time my uh, parents had moved to Botswana. Mm -hmm. And so... You're from I, Kenya, right? I'm from Kenya, yeah. yes. Uh, lived in Ethiopia after that. That was the first country we lived outside of uh, Kenya. And then came to McLean, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then to Botswana. Mm -hmm. And while we were in Botswana uh, was when I was of age to go to college. Mm -hmm. Came to the Art Institute mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, met Maurice there. Mm -hmm. uh, actually the first day of orientation I remember meeting oh. him because we couldn't find the train station. and. New to Atlanta, I was walking with my roommate. She uh -huh. had come from Maryland, and she also had the same kind of background I did. Mm -hmm. I was so lucky that that was who I was assigned. Yeah. Because it w our backgrounds were so similar. Mm -hmm. She was also from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. um, when we would go on our college break, mm -hmm. we would fly together from Atlanta to Germany because her pam family was based in Germany, mm -hmm. and then I would continue. So that would mean my Europe stop was where she would get off, uh -huh. and then I would continue to South Africa. Mm -hmm. So that way we, you know, could at least start the journey together. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Were you and Maurice college sweethearts? No. Huh? No. Wow. Uh, he was just, a, he was a class, he wasn't a classmate. We never had classes together. But we were in the same discipline as far as the first, your first foundational years. Mm -hmm. You, uh, we had the same classes. Mm -hmm. And then you branch off into your, your major. Mm -hmm. And he branched off into, um, a fashion illustration, mm -hmm. and I continued with uh, advertising design, graphic okay. design. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So graphic design, like on the computer, yeah. or well, uh, yes, it was computer. So layouts, uh, ads, photography, mm -hmm. um, writing, um, copy mm -hmm. for for ads and advertising, and it was me trying to find a, a responsible thing, a way of doing art. Oh, and all okay. I knew was that okay, commercial art, because they were like, "What do you? You won't be painting at the side of the painting portraits." So, <laughs> so I was like, "No, there is a graphic design degree." So, mm, okay. yes. so that was okay. I was like, "Okay, that's what. I'll, that's the way I'm going to be able to do mm -hmm. my art and and make a living." Mm -hmm. I I didn't know about how to get into the fine art world. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how long did you do advertising art for? Um, I only did it at school. Oh. Oh, and then my first job was working for a t-shirt company. Mm. And so I would design graphics for their t-shirts. Mm. Yeah. And I did that. Actually, I did my first job while in school mm -hmm. was for a t-shirt company. It was a small t-shirt company. Mm -hmm. And I would do that work and do their designs and he would do, uh, print them out on shirts and sweatshirts and sportswear. And, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So then how did you find your way into the fine art world then? Uh, I answered an ad in Creative Loafing, <laughs> <laughs> where they were looking to hire, it was a, a, a production company for original art, and they it would have 
you know, rows and rows of, mm -hmm. they, were, they had about 10 artists mm -hmm. that worked for them, mm -hmm. doing uh, original art for interior design, mm -hmm. hotels, hospitals, okay. um, any corporation, that like corporate art. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first day. Wow. When I answered that ad and went in, and they were like, okay, so, yeah, they saw the graphic, you know, it was a graphic art portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, but they were like, so can you, yes, can you duplicate this? It was like a, a it was a landscape. Mm -hmm. And the, the artist who was original was sitting next to me, you know, he was working next to me, mm -hmm. and then I did the duplicate, and they were like, okay, you're hired, um, you can come in tomorrow. When I left that place, I couldn't even believe it. Because when I was in school, I couldn't have imagined that there was a place that you could paint original mm -hmm. art all day for eight hours a day, even though they were paying us pennies. But I was just so thrilled. I didn't even wash my hands. My, my hands had paint on them. Aww. And on the, you know, on the ride back, I was like, oh my God. Because oh. I wanted to keep the, I was like, I actually, with the paint spattered hands, I was like, I actually got it. A job painting. That's so cute. Right, <laughs> right. And so I worked there for uh, probably about two or three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually they, they were like, you did so well, do you know any other artists? And so I put a call out to my friends, mm -hmm. left messages on their phones, and the only one who came mm -hmm. was Maurice. He answered the call. Mm -hmm. And he, he got hired after that. Nice. Yeah. So then after that, did you, like, did you... Did that give you confidence to sort of strike out on your own, or how did that happen? Well, it happened in that because I would see what how they ran their business. So uh -huh. they are huge. They were a huge company, uh -huh. and uh, maybe two or three times a year they would go and do the big art fairs. So mm -hmm. they would do uh, Art Expo in New York, mm -hmm. and they had a, a New York one. They had one on the West Coast, mm -hmm. and then there was a Decor Expo that was done in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So I knew. That, that that's what they were doing. So there are trade magazines, you can see what's going on in the business. Mm -hmm. And it got to be maybe two and a half years, and I said, I remember just sitting on the deck, you know, on the dock, having our lunch, and I was like, I'm not coming back. I'm not gonna be here the next summer. Because we'd spend the whole summer in that warehouse. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not, I've learned all I can. You know the arrogance of you. I was like, I'm not gonna be here. Maurice was like, like so what are you gonna do? I was like, I don't know, but it's not going to be here. Wow. Not knowing what, how to chart a, a path out. So the, my last check, it was like a $500 check, you know, uh -huh. the commission in, included. And I was like, all right, this is, this is it. And I got home and started just painting all the things that I had wanted to paint because we were painting things that fit into their line, yeah. their particular color palette. Mm -hmm. They relied on what was in the industry, what the uh, interior designers had mm -hmm. a palette they would work with every yeah. year. And I was allowed to do whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm going to do figurative. Mm -hmm. Figurative paintings, I want to do florals, I want to do abstracts. Mm -hmm. And because I had the experience of being able to do it, I just did them for myself. Um, for, uh, there was a, um, a woman who had a small distribution company and she was dealing with African-American artists, mm -hmm. African and African-American artists. And she used to buy our work from our employers. Mm -hmm. So eventually she found out that I didn't work there anymore. Mm -hmm. And she was like, do you want to come and work for me? So I brought her some of the, the pieces that I had already done. Because mm -hmm. when I quit there, I, could, I just started building a portfolio of the new work that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So when she asked, I showed her what I had. She liked it and bought it. I was like, fancy that. <laughs> And just from there, that we worked for her for maybe a few months, uh -huh. and then she couldn't pay us anymore. So mm -hmm. we were like, "Well, we're on our own." So we started. Uh, I, I remember encouraging Maurice to uh, uh, apply for the National Black Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. and he was like, "I've never heard of it before." No, he'd heard of it, but he was like, "You never considered doing it." Mm -hmm. I was like, "I think you should, because you're really good." Mm -hmm. So I applied. He applied. My sister applied. Mm -hmm. He got in. And I was like, do you know how competitive, it was so competitive because artists from around the country yeah. would compete for those few spaces Yeah, he got in on his first try. Hey. But then he burnt the midnight oil creating new work because everything was on it. He put everything that he had in mm -hmm. it, went and did that show mm -hmm. and, and practically sold out to the point of where 
the organizers came back and said, you know, if you want to do another five days, it was a 10 day show, uh -huh. but he got in, some of the booths were given five days so they could have more artists have a chance to sell. Mm -hmm. They were like, if you want to do five more days, mm -hmm. because it, he got such an excellent response, mm -hmm. but he had nothing left in him mm -hmm. and he had nothing left to, sh to sell, yeah. which is great. And he was like, I, I can't do it. Yeah. But the, what a great um, way to start. And yeah. so that literally started his career. Um, uh -huh. And so, I mean, what what catapulted you up? Well, I did this, the, did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I took my first portfolio of work, and there was a black-owned hotel it used to be on fairly popular district, right mm -hmm. downtown, where Georgia State now has bought it up. Mm -hmm. And. A friend of mine worked in the cafe on the ground floor. It was called the Celebrity Cafe. Mm -hmm. There was a gallery on the top floor of mm -hmm. that hotel. She was like, I think you should bring your work and ship because there's a black guy who owns a, a gallery at the hotel. Mm -hmm. So I took my art down there. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I like this. What else do you have? And I was like, well, I had a little 200ZX uh, Nissan. Mm -hmm. I had a 22 by 48 canvas that I had tied to the roof of my car. <laughs> brought it down to, to the gallery. They put it up there. Maybe two, three weeks later, he was like, Grace, I sold it. And I was like, because you know, in my mind, I was like, making it $5 an hour. I was like, let me put $2,500 on it. He sold it. And when he when I went down there, and he was like, okay, so how do you want it? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, how do you want it? He, he was like, I in 20s, he gave me like, and I was like, Wow. I couldn't even. That was that was it. And then after that, he would call me when he sold something. Mm -hmm. I'd go down and get my check. He's like, bring, bring, keep bringing some. Then eventually, he's like, I'm gonna do a one woman show. <gasps> so, again, like Maurice did, painted mm -hmm. day and night, day and night, because this is what we had been working for. I'm yeah. Thinking, that I'm thinking, and uh, set up the show. Uh, he made a banner and all that. They you know, mounted the, mm -hmm. the show and had it at the hotel. People came and they sold out. <gasps> and, I, and the worst, you know, one thing I did remember is was like, okay, I'm going to need you to come up and talk about your art. He had never, he hadn't said anything about that. Uh -huh. So the work was up and I was like, got up in front of the podium and nothing came out. Oh. I looked at the crowd looking at me and I was like, great pizza and this is my work <laughs> like it was really tentative oh but uh it didn't matter they, mm -hmm. they still liked the work yeah mm -hmm. yeah my i remember my former classmates came and they they were like we'd never they'd never seen been to an art show mm -hmm. seen the whole i had never well i had i had seen there was a man called william tolliver mm -hmm. And I went to a show that he had in Peachtree Battle. Mm -hmm. So he was a, a, a young African American artist. Mm -hmm. And he had a show that was up. A friend, a former classmate of mine, invited mm -hmm. me to come and see. He was like, This is a young black man mm -hmm. who has a gallery in Peachtree Battle, and I think we should go and see it. Mm -hmm. So I, that was my first time seeing a professional artist that was young, he was in his 40s at the time, mm -hmm. that was selling original artwork. Wow. Right. And, you know, I went ahead and and did the same. So from then on, it was, anything was possible. Wow. You at one point stopped doing paintings and then moved to sculpture. Mm -hmm. What brought that on? And then where did you start with sculpture? Because like, you know, you do a bunch around your house and yes. what we can take video later, but it's like, you have such a range in this mm -hmm. you made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Materials. Why, why the shift? The shift was uh, when I would go to shows, there would be 800 art, oh, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Mm -hmm. There would be like 150 artists, mm -hmm. and there would be 100 of them, 120 of them mm -hmm. would be painters. Mm -hmm. Most of them painting the same thing, yeah, or similar, mm -hmm. and as a way of distinguishing myself. Even though a lot of people didn't do what I did, mm -hmm. you know, mine were a lot of florals, a lot of abstracts, which were you know, really, really what went really well. Mm -hmm. I sold them well. Um, but for my own personal growth, I wanted to do something mm -hmm. three-dimensional. I wanted to do 3D. Mm -hmm. Just a, and also as a way of distinguishing myself in, from in the market. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to learn something new. 
So did you start making stuff like this, or did you start with more sculptures like those? Oh, more sculptures or? that were smaller than that. Okay. So more like, that would be closer, but they were even smaller than that. You see okay. the one at the door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I will show you some of one of the first ones. Really? And I kept it because it was. Oh. So it's just like starting something small. Wow. So starting was, I, I know I wanted to do clay, but I, was, I didn't want it just to be one medium. So you just started here. You know, so just, 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 just amazing just right little, off the bat. Just a little clay piece. So again, it becomes mixed media because it's not just clay, and it is metal, the wooden balls that I gild, and then a found object. So this is a, I think it's a candle holder. So it added, you know, I wanted something with found object uh -huh. and then mixing mixing the media. Did you know how to do clay at first or did you just kind of figure it out? Did you know how to use like melt metal and all that? Or no. It's experimentation. Wow. Yeah. Just part of, again, creative play. Uh, Maurice had told you that, um, well, that at the job that we used to work, work mm -hmm. at, there was room for experimentation. Mm -hmm. So we have experimented with clay before. Mm, okay. um, I took clay in elementary school, mm -hmm. in, in high school, in middle school. Luckily, uh, Fairfax County Public Schools mm -hmm. had an excellent art department. Nice. So we had, we did everything at school. We did soul screening, clay, mm -hmm. uh, metal, painting, anything you could think of we mm -hmm. did uh, in high school. So coming to the Art Institute, it was you, you just built on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the same thing with the, with the sculpture. You have to start somewhere. So yeah. I started somewhere small. And then as you're working and your ideas develop, you mm -hmm. expand on it. Got it, got it. So what is your process like when you start making one of these? Do you have a clear idea of what you want to do? Or do you have kind of like a concept or a feeling and kind of go on that? and? Do you, are you able to knock it out really quickly, or does it take a really long time? Or uh, I let it take its time, mm -hmm. especially once I'm getting bigger. Yeah. As I'm working on the medium-sized things, I have worked out, you know, how I'm going to make this bigger. Mm -hmm. um, I start with a concept, mm -hmm. or uh, with the found objects. Mm -hmm. So putting the phone, found objects together, see how they work, mm -hmm. how they're talking to each other and what I can build from these two pieces or three pieces together mm -hmm. and then just go from there. Yeah. As it develops, I can then get an idea of what I'm trying to say. Mm. And how long does it usually take to make, or like how long did that take you to make? That might have taken a little while because I was trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I give myself the time, there's no... Mm -hmm. So I might, I might definitely did the head first mm -hmm. on the stand. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm like, let me build something around it to, ex you know, to um, accentuate whatever, the power mm -hmm. of this piece. So is that like days or months or? Uh, it, I would say days. days. I would say days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The bigger they are, the more time that goes in. So like that one? <laughs> well, this <laughs> does take days uh -huh. because I, uh, sometimes I'll just lay, lay out the pieces on the, on the floor uh -huh. and then put the beads in. So I'll do I'll, I'll do this part first, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, well, let me just extend a piece on the other end, uh -huh. and then I'm like, let me I want it to go around the the neck, mm -hmm. so I'll, you know, laying it out. Yeah, you can see how it's going to be, and then I'll, all I have to do is string it together mm -hmm. once I've laid it out. And why'd you choose fishing wire? I tried it with wire, mm -hmm. and the wire after moving it around, mm -hmm. cuts through the wood. Uh, so uh, the fishing line, it's a really thick fishing line, is uh -huh. strong enough that no matter how many beads I put on, uh -huh. that it's, it'll still um, hold the weight, and even mm -hmm. as I bend it, doesn't cut through the wood. Mm -hmm. And then, wow, like how do you, is the fishing wire just good for movement, or is there a specific way that you have to like huh? construct it to get it to move all of these different weights? I think so. So, you know, uh, rolled up. It's 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 something oh. just an innocuous and interesting mm -hmm. looking piece, right? Yeah. But then, what I like is that it is malleable, mm -hmm. adaptable. So it can, you know, I, I wanted to form around the body. I mm -hmm. wanted to tell, you know, a different story. Mm -hmm. If it goes or if it can go around the front, like. 
I like abstraction as well. Mm -hmm. So it can be conventional, mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. right? Or you can, you know, make it more abstract. Yeah. So it it makes it much more interesting. Uh -huh. And that's what I think the uh, the fishing line allows me to to move it around. Do you do fishing line with a lot of them, or is it just you know found that this one worked for this? I think it worked for this group because mm -hmm. uh, because. When I'm putting it on the models, mm -hmm. I don't want it to be the same piece for yeah. each person. Each person is going to be, this could be a neck piece on one, mm -hmm. and on a small lady, it could be you know, like a waist piece. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you bring out the other one? Is that too hard? No, it's not. Okay. Just for some context for people watching, like on, mm -hmm. the, on these in the back, these are, these are like zip ties, right? They are. Like on the wrist, those are zip ties. Yeah. These are some of them bamboo things. These are made. Of, this is spoons, mm -hmm. you guys. This is spoons, you and it looks like high the, fashion. You have to bring down the spoons. <laughs> I love texture. Yeah, and different things give you a different something different. These are also spoons. <laughs> yeah, you do an amazing job with texture, Grace. I'll have so to this, get it. This is different what I'm way. talking about. So this was the first one I made, the, the small one. Mm. Then I said, you know what, I can extend it even more. Can I try that one? Absolutely. So I was like, this is a bracelet. And with your ponytail, it goes very, very well. Very, very well. Yeah. Mm. I like that it's light. Yeah, it's very light. Yeah. And it moves really well. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cute on. Right? Girl. Ocean. Right? Work. Get a black bodysuit. Literally. And then even in a shoot, I could just, just like that. It changes. Oh. And it feel like it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Like it doesn't feel like it's digging into mm -hmm. your neck or anything. Mm -hmm. It's all really soft. Mm -hmm. So nice. were these pieces part of the inception of New Africans? Like no. where did New Africans this, start? As far as the costume? As far as the, like, yeah, or the idea, the like, idea, where did it start? It started in conversations uh, that Maurice and I would have, you know, standing next to each other while we're painting, or, uh, you know, we always have uh, those conversations about Africa, African Americans, mm -hmm. um, the East and West, mm -hmm. continental and, and diasporan Africans. Mm -hmm. And so through those conversations, uh, I remember one day he said, you know, but you're black. And I was like, mm, no, I'm not black, I'm Kenyan. <laughs> and he was like, wait a minute. And see, and the reason why I say that is because when I say I'm Kenyan, I want to assert my identity. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just uh, be lumped in mm -hmm. with, with black. Black is a, an idea that you know, it was counter to being called all the negative words that white people have created for African-American people mm -hmm. or black people. And they came up with the word, they were like, I'm gonna mm -hmm. call myself, I'm black and I'm proud. Mm -hmm. And I understand that totally. Mm -hmm. And I am black and I'm proud too. Mm -hmm. But when I say I am not black, I'm saying I'm a Kenyan. You know, mm -hmm. all my life, I came here already with my own identity. Mm -hmm. So I, I came as a Luya woman. Mm -hmm you know, uh, in Kenya, from Kenya, who lived in these African countries and now live in America. Mm -hmm. So, of course, in America, I'm, I'm Kenyan-American. Mm -hmm. So, of course, in America, people will look at me and say, well, she's black. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But when I talk about myself, I say that I am Kenyan. Kenyan-American. Mm -hmm. Kenyan so, we came through, through those conversations, Maurice was saying, so, Africans on this side, because of the oppression that they've gone through and, and survived, mm -hmm. he figures that they, he's gonna call them the new Africans. Because mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they have gone through uh, things that we, even though we've gone through colonialism and imperialism on the continent, mm -hmm. it's completely different than the African American experience in the, in the US, in the Caribbean, in South America. So he was saying those people he's gonna call the new Africans. And why NU, not NEW? Because N-E-W refers to time mm -hmm. in a linear sense, mm -hmm. like a beginning. Mm -hmm. And you is beyond time. Mm. So it's more futuristic. Okay. So there is no construct where time is, uh, in Africa, time is not 
a line mm -hmm. is a plane in all directions. It's three dimensional. Mm -hmm. So the past, present, and future are all existing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I always say that about this piece, where the um, this, she's a pregnant woman. So she is carrying her child mm -hmm. and her grandchildren. Mm. The I girl see. is born, born, you know, with all her eggs mm -hmm. as a baby. Yeah. So her children are already in there. Mm -hmm. So the child is carrying her. The the mother is carrying her child and her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a that's where line. Yeah. It's time is not just a, a line. It's not just a straight line. Mm -hmm. And it, the past, present, and future exist all in the same mm -hmm. plane. Yeah. So when I say in you, that's mm -hmm. that's why. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was that? And you. Maurice. Yeah. So I know that you, you know, you and Maurice collaborate a lot. Was it hard in the beginning to collaborate with somebody else, like to figure out how somebody else works and where you fit into that and everything? Uh, it's easier for us because we worked to that place already. I knew how he mm. worked. Right. We used to paint next to each other. Uh. Um, when I was getting for my ready for my first show, I painted it at his apartment. Mm. He knew he knew how I worked. Mm -hmm. When he was getting ready for his uh, first show at the National Black Arts Festival, mm -hmm. I was there at the apartment, mm -hmm. and he was. We would be painting next to each other. Mm -hmm. So it's never been a stepping on anyone's toes. Nice. So when I moved in here with mm -hmm. Maurice, we're both artists. We both have equipment for all our disciplines, mm -hmm. and. Um, this this is where we we don't I don't I don't think I've ever stepped on or he's he's ever stepped on what what I'm doing. Nice. Yeah. And it just comes from respect. Mm -hmm. Just respect of the person, respect of their craft. Yeah. Um, of course, he understands because he's an artist as well. Yeah. So when the living room is a wreck and all the stuff is laid out as I'm beating all this stuff, you know, he'll just walk around it. Yeah. Yeah. And when he's uh, adhering all his stuff, I'll, I'll help him adhere it. When mm -hmm. he needs uh, extra backgrounds, mm -hmm. I'll pull out this, the, the, the sander and I'll be sanding yeah. and rounding the edges. Nice. He'll do the first one and say, well, can you help me with this? And mm -hmm. this is how I want the corners to look. Mm -hmm. Okay, got you. And so while he's working on another part, I'll, I'll do the mm -hmm. one part. Uh, if I have a deadline coming up mm -hmm. and I need that the dots burned into my pieces. He'll mm -hmm. help. He'll take the the bottom and burn some pieces in, it, burn some holes in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a, it's a symbiotic relationship as far as when it, when we're creating our art. Yeah, we want to see it done and done well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's nice. I like that. Do you have a favorite? medium to work with like in sculpture or is that like asking about a favorite kind of child? Yeah, um I don't well I'm really enjoying mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying using this medium. Uh -huh. I'm really Thank glad you. that I stumbled on I don't even know how I decided to use the beads. Mm -hmm. I think I wanted to break up the pattern because it was too cement too straight lines. Yeah. And I wanted to make it curve so I was like let me put a bead and in the beginning. So as the bead was put in it spread spread it out and made it a circle. Mm. So then I could do things like like that. Wow. You know, it, it makes it curve. Yeah. It, it makes it curve like that. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I see. Right? So me putting a bead in between spreads it out and then brings this in. So mm. I can make a tight circle and make it wider so then I can build on the shoulder. So it allowed me to do a lot of different things, and I haven't even done all that I can imagine. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love the silhouettes that it gives me, too. Uh -huh. And do you have a least favorite medium? I, I love oil. I don't mm. like the smell. Mm. Yeah. And I don't like that it takes too long to dry. Yeah. I think because I've, I've worked with acrylic and, oil and watercolors for so long yeah. that uh, the length of time it takes for oil to dry is a turn -off. And really, more than that is the smell. The smell is a turn off. Yeah. Me. yeah. Oil is kind of, is a bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love pastels. I don't like the dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And where do you get your inspiration from? Everything. Mm -hmm. And I've even stored things in, in my memory. So when it came to doing these hairstyles for the new Africans, uh -huh. I remember taking down my mother's hair uh, mm -hmm. as a little girl 
and wishing that I could get those threaded hairstyles. Uh -huh. But I remember taking it down and I always had that in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I just filed that away because those threaded styles to me were just fantastic. Yeah. And when we first came to the U.S., she had gotten it beautifully, so we call them Swahili plaits, but mm -hmm. you know, people here call them French braids, mm -hmm. Swahili plaits, and uh, we, you know, with a crown at the top, and mm -hmm. I just thought it was brilliant. And I remember taking that down for the last time, mm -hmm. but I never forgot what that was mm -hmm. and how gorgeous those women used to look walking through the streets. Um, books and movies mm -hmm. are an incredible uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a people watcher. I love watching people. Yeah. Um, travel is my drug of choice. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Traveling to different cultures, uh, different places, mm -hmm. seeing how it looks inspires me. Textures and materials and uh, traditional crafts from mm -hmm. all over the world, they inspire me. Mm -hmm. um, even new materials, new technology. Mm -hmm. uh, Someone had brought up Iris Van, Van Herpen, mm -hmm. and she had an exhibit at the High Museum, and some of her uh, costumes were 3D printed. Yeah, which I loved that she incorporated new technology in her in her practice. Yeah, yeah. Iris Van Herpen's stuff is insane. More than I would love to wear one someday. More than yeah. yes, and another one, uh -huh. uh, Guo Pei, Guo. Yeah, the, she had the exhibition at SCAD. Yes. We went she, to that one. That was where I almost knocked the mannequin over. Ah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's a genius. Yeah. yeah. She, when she did that yellow dress that everyone made fun of Rihanna wearing, that it, it looked, looked like great a pizza, on her. It was spectacular. it was spectacular. Her work is exquisite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things like that. Looking at other artists and what mm -hmm. they are able to do with their discipline. Yeah. So it's film, music, mm -hmm. and I love music from all over the world. Yeah. Movies from all over the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I like the way different people tell their stories. They're different styles. Yeah, I mm -hmm. totally agree. Mm -hmm. I love... <sighs> Dubbing drives me insane because mm -hmm. I feel like when you dub a foreign film, mm -hmm. like it takes away the storytelling. It takes away part of the authenticity. I don't of... want to hear it. Yeah, And exactly. the voices that they use, they're using American voices. Yeah. And it throws the whole thing. It looks schizophrenic really does. to me. Yeah. So I'd rather hear nothing mm -hmm. and read the subtitles. Yeah. Or I want to hear the original voice. Exactly. And subtitles. Because I don't want it dubbed. Because there's also like a music to the language there that is. contributes to the storytelling. That Even the way they, they, they use their words is mm -hmm. going to be, it, it tell, helps tell the board. Helps me with the setting. Exactly. So if it's in China, I want to hear mm -hmm. them speak. Yeah. yeah. Their language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the other mediums that you use, Grace? Because I'm thinking you, you have the that woodcut on the wall that's so gorgeous. Oh, yes. So tell uh, us, tell us all the tell us all the mediums uh, that you use. Yeah, um, I'm also a photographer. Uh, I was a member. I'm a member of Systography. A black are you really? Yes. Yeah. Hey. I've been exhibiting uh, photography for a while. I don't do it as much as I as I would like. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love photography as well. Uh, used to print in the dark room until the last dark room closed. Yeah. I recently went to SCAD where they had an open house and I walked into that, that room and got a whiff of that developer <gasps> and it brought back all the memories of just being in there, you know, like a mole printing uh, black and white photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, I do paint. I paint abstracts and landscapes and uh, florals. Um, watercolor, acrylic paint. Um, you do basket weaving also. Some of the pieces upstairs, some of the, some of the people with their bodies. You like, there's one that you have it oh, all yes. woven. Like yes, it's I like am. basket You're woven. Right. You're yeah, right. it's woven with sisal. Yes, right? yes. So that comes even from play. Yes. For me, that the whole uh, working with 3D and mixed media is a creative play. It's a creative, creative play practice. Mm -hmm. So 
some of it is just uh, some, sometimes I'll make something I just started doing that um, I made a piece uh, it was a headpiece with a veil mm -hmm. it's gold and I you know hand sewed the little sequins on it and it was just for me just to make for the sake of making mm -hmm. and it was uh, just a meditative process it wasn't for production for sale for exhibit it was just to create for the mm -hmm. sake of creating and that then takes me into you know you can slough off some of the extra stuff and get back to get back to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for example, on this on this new African's piece that Layla loves right next to her, mm -hmm. on Layla's piece right here. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so, what parts did you do, and what parts did Maurice do? So I know that I cut out all the little hieroglyphs. No, he cut out these ones. I cut out these ones down here, mm -hmm. and then laid them down. And pretty much, actually, on this one, he did. He did the, the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Mounted it. So the only part that I would have done would be the one to, to round off the edges on the wooden piece and to cut out the pieces on the bottom, mm -hmm. the hieroglyphs that he has underneath. And then, but you did the costuming. Oh, yes, yes. So this is a um, sisal fiber. This is one of Maurice's bangles on her, her hand made out of wood. This is one of his bangles made out of acrylic. And the neck piece I made out of uh, cable ties. I gilded her neck with gold leaf, and uh, yeah, and then this is the kanga, which is the traditional East African fabric um, that usually has a Swahili proverb on it. And, and then um, Maurice did the the burnt flowers. Yes, he did. He burnt the environment and, around. And then who took the photo? Maurice. Okay. Wow, so it's really a true collaboration. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that you didn't burn them because I remember us talking about how much you liked right. fire. <laughs> a little pyromaniac, but it is constructive. It's constructive, <laughs> yeah. uh, pyromania, uh -huh. works through, you know, productively, yeah. without being destructive. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, some of these bigger pieces, yeah, we'll, yeah. Both, be, we'll both be burning um, mm -hmm. those. Um, This one. Yeah, I think we both did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both we both burned. I, might, I burnt the heads around the uh, the flowers. He did that burning down there. What is her neck piece made of? It is uh, made out of wire and cable ties. Wow. Yeah. And does she have silver on her body? Yes. So I will gild, um, sometimes I will gild their their necks or designs on their body mm -hmm. with, with gold leaf. Gold or silver leaf. Wow. And what's that made of? It is made of tape and paper. Is it really? Yeah. It looks like that squash yeah. that you can buy. I thought it was actually How? the squash. Yeah. How? Tape, tape. Where? What? So wire is underneath and then tape around it right uh -huh. in paper and the wire is a allows me to bend it i'm going to bring it down so you can see it. Oh my God. yeah so just regular items grace just re the common item because people people really overlook what they have around them yeah you really are the queen of diy man right literally right. What the heck is tape? this this is tape, tape. How, how what do you mean so you can Masking tape. This? Masking tape. <laughs> She's like, this? I'm Masking sorry, tape. it doesn't look... I, it, it, how, the color? How did you... It's ma masking tape comes this color. No, but the, and the, it looks like it got like... Yeah, rolled. Oh, yes. Okay, so you can roll masking tape and then just roll it around. Roll it, right? And it's still sticky on the outside. And then you can roll it around. Okay. Yeah, you don't know how to tape anything, Layla. Can she? Can you put it on her? Absolutely. And the thing I like about it is I can make it flare out. Oh my gosh! I can make it, you know, just to make it look different on each. If I use it again, I put it on someone else, and I can make it. My mind is blown. Literally. Can you put the head thing on her? Bruh. 
This is too much. God, I can't wait. I also need this too. That looks so incredible. Spectacular. Yeah. And her pose and her everything. Yes. So Didi's a little thing. She's she's probably as big as as, as you. Really? She looks monumental with that. She really does. Mm -hmm. She also reminds me of the Princess Mononoke. Yes. Is a Hayao Miyazaki. Do you know Hayao Miyazaki? No. What does Ooh. that name sound familiar? He's a uh, animator. He does um, like a Japanese animation. He did a movie called Spirited Away, which is probably yes, his most famous. Yes, Maurice one. has it. Yeah. Yes. Please believe. You yes. Know, Maurice is the animation dude, and we. That movie was. I remember getting captivated by that. It got dear, serious and dark and. We, making your way back. And we watched that movie so many times so and she's... Princess Mononoke. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's the water spirit that yeah. she reminds me of. Oh, so this is this is the water spirit. Mm. Wonderful. You should check this movie out, I think. You yeah, know. you probably really Maurice, like it. Maurice has it. Oh, oh you should totally watch, watch it. it. Right, that's it. No, we've watched it. Oh, you have I've watched Princess Mononoke. Many, okay. okay. He, he's bought many years ago. So okay. okay. Right. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So you like animation? I I like I like Hayao Miyazaki stuff, and I like stuff similar to that. But I'm afraid to go too far down the anime rabbit right. hole because right. I know it is a rabbit hole, yes. and I'm very susceptible to rabbit holes. Right. right. We so. and you and many of your age mates. Yeah. Because it has really affected how they even how they draw. Yeah. Yeah. And the so. kind of art that they produce, it looks like that. Yeah. They're deeply into it. Yeah. Yeah, one of my friends is really into anime. Mm -hmm. I went through a phase when I was younger where I tried to learn to do manga. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Maurice never, has them, a whole bunch of them. I'm sure, yeah, mm -hmm. no, but it never really stuck, and mm -hmm. so then I just sort of went back to realism, yeah. which I like. And you know, I've gotten told a lot of a bunch of the times that like, you know, it's helpful to learn realism before going to manga oh, yeah. because it's hard to go the it other is. way around. Right. So, because yeah. once you learn the basics, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Are you into anime or yeah. uh, you know loosely, yeah. very loosely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> loosely. I have yeah. a little nephew that's all up in it. Yeah, and he's a little artist as well. Mm -hmm. So he's always drawing. Nice. Mm -hmm. And not just drawing. He, which I love, and he did this on his own. So he got really into Angry Birds, <laughs> and then he started making 3D Angry Birds out of paper. Oh. So not just drawing it. He wanted to make a 3D version. And I was like, wow, look at you. And he was surprised that we were so excited about his, you know, he did that on his own. Thank you so much, Grace. This was so much fun. And yeah, I'm in constant awe of everything you're doing. And I'm so honored that you could talk to me. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, taking time out and coming to visit us uh, two or three times during the <laughs> shutdown. And it was awesome. Sharing and, you know, sharing, you know, your panzori. Your interests, your music. Thank you. And thank you for sharing as well. Yeah, thank you. Check her out. She's second cool. Check Maurice out too. They're both amazing. Yeah. And after COVID, you know, find their exhibition, The New Africans, and go see it. I just don't even know how you make these things, Grace. You know, like you make the first, like the first one she tries, you make yeah. that, and then you're like, let me make it different. How do I make it different? Uh -huh. And so the first one that she tried on was like this curved, and then it straightened out. Yeah. So this one I said, let me curve around the shoulder as far as yeah. the hand, and where it, she can slip over, she can still wear it over her. And then the short in the front or the back, or it can turn, we can turn it around and flip it, and it'll be long in the front and short. In the